against his name. The eyes have been prayed to. Heard the sentence. Uh, and it's a line of the rules Hello, you and welcome to your ever interesting and exciting informative program from the National Assembly. This is a program that brings to you parliamentary events and proceedings from the National Assembly within the week. I remain your regular host, Emmanuel Ehijine. S men attack has continued to dominate the national discourse as the nation woke up to gruesome attack of communities in Benue State where over 80 people were murdered. The Senate in the switch reaction condemned the killings in the state and many more across the country, stressing that the mindless bloodletting should have no place in anywhere in the country. The Nigerian Senate has condemned the killings in Benue State and other parts of the country, stressing the mindless board Latin has no place in the society. Senate President Bukola Saraki during his welcome back speech to lawmakers upon their resumption from the Christmas and New Year break said that more sober reflection is needed on the killings in some parts of the country, particularly recent tragic events in Benue State. It is clear that this goes beyond religious or ethnic issues. It is a breakdown, really, of the security apparatus in the country. And it is a wake-up call that we must act now. Distinguished colleagues, the passion on which you've all spoken this afternoon, we can only be reflected by ensuring the follow-up to see that all what we have said today begins, we begin to see action. Leader of the Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawal, who presented the report of the Ada Committee on the Review of Security Infrastructure of Nigeria Emergency Visit to Benue State, condemned the massacre of farmers in Logo and Guma local government areas of Benue State and called for a working synergy between and among security operatives to combat the worrisome situation. Other lawmakers also took turn to condemn the killing in Benue State, saying the killings were all called for. In view of the emergence of several failed states and conflict zones around our borders and in the West African sub-region, the federal government should sponsor and convene an international conference on the proliferation of weapons in Nigeria, the ways and means of stopping the proliferation and reading our communities of existence armed should also be profiled. This is a national issue. I would not like to bore you with the details of what people have said or repeating them. But I'd like to say that there are immediate solutions and there are long-term solutions to the problem on the ground. Creation of cattle colonies, devolution of power, or state police, those are long-term solutions because we can't do that first thing tomorrow morning. But as we're in the chamber as they are talking, Mr. President, who knows when the next life is going to be lost? One life lost is as bad as 50 lives lost. Those who are fostering the current crisis in Nigeria has no regard for any international law. They are already afoot. Who are waging this war? And I'm glad that many of us have alluded that there might be international dimensions to what we are witnessing. But the truth is, most of the participants of this war are from Nigeria. A Senate president expressed concern that it has been disheartening to see, especially during the festive period when Nigerians should have been enjoying carefree time with their loved ones with enough petrol in their tanks to make that cherished journey to their various hometowns. Saraki also appealed to lawmakers and other office to justice in 2019 and focus on good governance for now, saying that it is too early for 2019 politicking to override the legislative agenda of the larger work of governance. Also from the Senate on Wednesday, and still on the continuous clashes and the killing involving farmers and herdsmen in the country, the Senate has resolved to suspend plenary for two days to hold the security summit, which will focus on finding a lasting solution 
to the lingering crisis including the menace of kidnapping and other forms of violent crimes in the country. The Senate resolution was sequel to a motion moved by the Deputy Senate President Ike Kurumadu, who also warned that if something urgent was not done, terrorists would soon overrun the country. The lawmakers who took turns to speak on the state of the security situation called on President Muhammadu Buhari to remove heads of security agencies or reject the Security Council. It is time the federal government of Nigeria acts because they were voted into office, they have an executive function to protect the lives and properties of Nigerians. This is one of several examples that we've been accosted with since we've been in the hollow chambers. Mr. President, a lot of things is wrong. We don't hold anybody accountable. Today, there was a time the IG came here during this uh, uh, hearing about this uh, Abuja Kaduna. I told him, why can't you man maybe eat five kilometers, put a SPO, that is a senior police officer, to man that place so that if anything happened on, uh, between that uh, uh, five kilometers, that person will be held accountable for that. Nobody, people will kill and the DPO will be there, people will kill the commissioner of police there, people will be killed and the ID is still this thing because they have people in the villa to protect them. They also hinted that in some states, militias now administer justice in villages and towns while traditional rulers have been silenced. I want to say it again and again that the governor of the state knows the perpetrators of this crime. The deputy governor knows the, these people. The Commissioner of Police knows these people. They move around freely, freely, and with their arms. I said it yesterday. I was at home during the fuel crisis, and I witnessed it. I saw it. In my own town, they move around, and today, they are the ones that judge between people. For his part, the Senate President Bukola Saraki, while ruling on the resolution to adjourn plenary for two days and hold security summit, said the Senate would work towards finding a lasting solution to the matter. We call on the Senate to suspend plenary next week, Wednesday and Thursday, to hold a security summit to address these issues. Okay, those in favor of the additional prayers moved and seconded say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The Senate, however, urged federal government to deploy more security forces in the areas affected by herdsman crisis, adding that the Army, police, DSS and civil defense should also mount a comprehensive surveillance on the Taraba Adamawa border to check the continued killings and kidnappings in the area. We shall be going on a short break, and when we return, we give you a report from the House of Representatives. You are still watching from the National Assembly from the People's Preferred Station, People's Television. The House of Representatives, like the Senate, resumed amidst tension which arose following the Benue massacre and the lingering fuel crisis and resolved to tackle the situation headlong. It also promised to ensure the quick passage of the 2018 budget. It was the charge by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, while welcoming members back from the Christmas break. The House also on Tuesday vowed to unravel the missing $44 million from the vote of the National Intelligence Agency, NIA. It also called for investigations into the controversy that have so far dogged the recent appointment of the new NIA boss, Rufai Abubakar. The House of Representatives resumed sitting on Tuesday after the Christmas break and made the pledge by the Speaker Yakubu Dogara to tackle the incessant fuel crisis. The House of Representatives resumed sitting on Tuesday after the Christmas break and made the pledge by the Speaker Yakubu Dogara to tackle the incessant fuel crisis, which has remained unabated for some time now. He also promised to look into the numerous killings across the country, particularly in Benue State, which have drawn worldwide condemnations. It is important that we shun bog person and accept responsibility for these wanton killings without which we would never find a solution to this evil. We cannot afford to fall our hands and pretend that all is well with our country. We cannot throw up our hands in defeat. 
We have a responsibility to all Nigerians, regardless of creed or ethnicity, in line with the constitutionally stated primary purpose of the government we're serving, which is securing the welfare, including the lives and property of our people. This we must do by ensuring that every law-abiding Nigerian is protected wherever he chooses to live in the country. And everyone who is up in arms against our citizens is quickly brought to justice wherever they are in the country. He promised that the 2018 budget will be quickly passed by both houses so as to address the many social and economic challenges in the country. The 2018 appropriation bill is before us for legislative action. We promise to do our utmost to pass it expeditiously. We should keep our word. However, this can only be possible if the ministries, departments, and agencies, MDS, cooperate effectively with relevant committees of the House by providing required information as may be requested of them. The speaker made his charge while welcoming back lawmakers from the Christmas break. In a related development, the House has adopted the motion calling for the investigation into the controversy over the appointment of the new DG NIA. The motion which came under matter of urgent public importance was sponsored by Honorable Diri Doye from Bayelsa State, which was titled The Need to Investigate the Alleged Cutting Away of $44 billion from the NIA and Issues Surrounding the Appointment of the New DG NIA, Rufai Abubakar. The lawmaker also pointed out the controversy over the identity and nationality of the new DG amidst not too long controversy and discovery of huge amounts belonging to the agency in an Ikoi apartment in Lagos State. This report tells us that about $260 million was approved for the NIA. And out of that amount, what they can lay hands on that they have seen is what we heard about the Ikoi gate scandal and of course just a few days back, the $44 million, which was in the vault of the NIA in Abuja. Supporting the motion, Toby Okechuku, a lawmaker from Inuku, says it is an embarrassment to the country. He said rightly that the dust has not settled on the Ikoi gate. And here again, we are witnesses to another exposure that completely derails the intent and spirit of our laws. My only worry in the motion he moved is that he said that a report that was to come from the Koigate scandal has not been brought, both from the executive and the one we set up in this house has not been brought forward. We've not had the report. So I think it will be fairly disingenuous for us to say and overburden our committee on national security to go again and start investigating for four million dollars when they have not reported on the forty-three. During the week also. The House summoned the Ministers of Interiors and its Agriculture and Rural Development counterpart over the lingering farmers and headsmen attacks which have claimed many lives in many parts of the country, mostly in Benue, Taraba and Nasarawa states. It also invited the service chiefs, the police and the DSS. The resolve and the integrity of the House of Representatives as a true representative of the people was tested at the plenary on Tuesday following the motion on the state of the insecurity in the country brought to the floor for debate by Honorable Gabriel Kolawole from Mundo State and Distin Takir from Benue State. The lawmakers in their submission raised worries over the incident killings by headsmen and some faceless persons which, according to them, is threatening the peace and unity of the country. They raised concern that despite the countless numbers of people killed so far, there have not been any record of arrest and prosecution by the security agencies as the deadly hour continues unabated. The need for the federal government to declare a state of emergency on security over a spate of deadly attacks in the country by suspected headsmen. 
The House notes the deadly and sustained attacks across the country from the beginning of the year by suspected headsmen, particularly in Benue State, supposedly over some missing cows which attacks led to the death of over 80 people. Also notes the attacks on worshippers in river states who were returning from a religious program to mark the new year, which led to the killing of about 17 people. That the president has directed the Federal Police to relocate to Benin State, concerned that some of the police officers attached to the zone are reported to have been killed by the headsmen. Lawmakers while debating on the motion condemned the killing and the lack of efforts by the government to stop the killings, as some also try to justify these killings. Place them in a place that is arid, it rains only once, two, three times in a year, and their lives is completely, completely attached to the animals with the rear. Now, Mr. Speaker, this hatchman needs our protection. And I blame the government squarely for not providing an enabling environment for the herdsman to remain where he is. Issues of the nation's porous borders, arms proliferation and the need to revisit the ECOWAS treaty on free movement of persons were also discussed during the debate. Lawmakers unanimously condemned the killings and agreed that there is a need to set up a committee that will investigate the state of insecurity and killings in the country and that the ministers of agriculture and its interior counterpart, as well as the service chiefs, the police and the DSS be invited also. The backdoor and secret implementation of fuel subsidy by the federal government through the NNPC was also in the front border of the debates at plenary on Wednesday. The House complained that so far over 300 billion naira has been expended from January to December 2017 without the approval of the National Assembly as required by the Constitution. The House of Representatives is set to investigate the disbursement of over 300 billion naira subsidy for petrol by the federal government through the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation in 2017, despite the subsidy not captured in the 2017 budget and subject to approval by the National Assembly. The motion which was sponsored by Sunday Karimi from Kugi State while calling for the investigation of the matter said the action by the federal government and the NNPC amounts to corruption and embezzlement since no withdrawal can be made from the federation account without the approval of the National Assembly. Despite the fact that the government has paid official rate at 145 naira per liter, at the moment it is the Nigerian Petroleum Corporation that is paying for the cost of the French year of 26 naira per liter. That's why the fact that the federal executive has posted that it has removed petroleum subsidy. And there is no parliamentary appropriation for subsidy payment in 2017 Appropriation Act. Supporting the motion, lawmakers were condemning the action of the government and the NNPC says it amounts to a breach of constitution and, and blamed it on impunity and executive recklessness that has characterized the actions of the present administration so far. Mr. Speaker, our reason by then was that we knew that this subsidy do not favor the common man. They just say it in papers that we are removing, we have subsidy in petroleum product. Mr. Speaker, let's be very honest today. Even as it is today, are we saying the man in Sokoto is aware of any subsidy? He buys this fuel at a price very exorbitant. And so, what is the subsidy the poor man is enjoying? So, Mr. Speaker, our reason by then was that there was a round tripping cartel in the government and among people and among petroleum dealers where they go and present papers and this money are round tripped and they get their money without bringing in the product. What in the executive and, and the legislative arm of government? have sworn to jealously guard, protect, and uphold. So there is a very serious breach of the Constitution that borders on executive arrogance 
and borders on executive recklessness. So we must make sure that the powers that is conferred and equivocally on the National Assembly by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria should be jealously protected and guarded. Today, no refinery is working in Nigeria. What is going on? All this first subsidy we are talking about is as a result of the failure of NLPC. They should be a bundle. And I'll say, the Minister of State for Petroleum, I thought he's a man that can make things happen for this country. But he has failed. He has failed this dear nation. And Nigerians are suffering. Go today on my way to this chamber. People lined up, queued up to buy petrol, to buy fuel in their cars. All of us are going through pain and agony. Nobody's accepted. Whether you are poor or rich, what is wrong with this country? The House stated that the act amounts to an impeachable offense by the President, declaring also that it cannot choose aspects of constitution it will or will not obey. It therefore called for an investigation into the breach and summoned the Minister of State for Petroleum, the GMD NMPC, and the Minister of Finance to appear before the Committee on Petroleum Downstream and Finance to investigate and report back for further legislative actions. In a later development, the House also condemned strongly the incessant arrest, brutality and malicious prosecution of Nigerian students by Indian police authorities. The action was brought before the House by Honorable Frederick Agbedi from Bayasa State, who in his submission stated that these attacks on Nigerians became so gruesome that it took frantic efforts by human rights lawyers to locate their places of detention. The lawmaker says it is the constitutional responsibility of government to guarantee the protection of its citizens irrespective of where they live. Informed of a new and rising trend of profiling, arrests, police brutality and malicious prosecution of Nigerian students by the police, including the incident of 30 December 2017 at Yaplem Talangana Street, where some Nigerian students like Shidebube Chukuma of 19 years old, Priscilla Sunday and Shola were arrested and taken away and it took the frantic efforts of colleagues and a human rights lawyer to locate their place of detention where they have remained since date. The position was supported by lawmakers who condemned the action in its entirety. But Honorable Sani Zuru cautioned that the House must tread in the path of caution in condemning the actions by the Indian police authorities so as not to aid some criminal elements among these Nigerians in perpetuating criminality abroad. A teenager of Nigerian parentage was raped in an Indian school. And the Indian police tried everything to suppress it. I also interacted with the Nigerian community, the president of the Nigerian Union in, 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 in Noida. And all you hear is tales of woes, of humiliation, harassment, molestation of Nigerians in India. So I will urge this house, I will urge members to please, as a matter of urgency and necessity, to support this investigative motion because the life of one Nigerian, if what Mr. Agbedi stated is an isolated case, there are more things that are happening and there is need to protect any Nigerian that is passing through any form of discrimination and humiliation in any country. I want to guarantee and assure every one of us here that all these cases including the cases mentioned in this motion are documented in the Nigerian High Commission. So we do not need to waste the resources that we have, which we do not actually have, to send parliamentarians to go on a jamboree just to go and investigate cases when we can actually summon the Minister of Foreign Affairs or some officials of the directorate of the Asian Directory to give us evidence about this gentleman first of all secondly and finally on the program the House of Representatives says the public private partnership arrangement is the panacea to Nigeria housing challenges it also passed for second reading a bill to monitor sexual abuse offenders to serve as deterrent to offenders. Shelter 
is a basic necessity of life like water and most people are desirous of having it. But experience has shown that in the desperation to acquire one, most unsuspecting Nigerians find themselves duped by people who masquerade as estate developers. Successive governments in the country have identified housing as a basic necessity of life. But despite efforts by these governments to ensure affordable housing, it has faced various challenges due to activities of fraudsters masquerading as estate developers to dupe or suspecting Nigerians. But the House is proposing a solution through a public-private partnership arrangement as a way out of the situation through a motion by Honorable Joseph Ejiawole from Edo State. Also note that in a bid to actualize the above injunction, the federal government set up a public-private partnership arrangement which entails government providing land for estate developers who are willing to use their resources to develop real estate for sale to members of the public at an affordable rate. Lawmakers while supporting the motion says, once affordable housing is achieved alongside water and other major necessities of life, corruption will disappear in the country. Every year we pass budget in this house. These men and women that are slaving to put food on the table, whatever they earn is not even enough to send their children to school. Then you see these guys collaborate with government agencies and dupe these ones. Tell me even a man that does not want to steal money. He has three years, he has four years, he has five years to spend in the civil service. Tell me if such a man, if he's, even if he's a bishop, will not be corrupted. Because he leaves the service, there will be no shelter. There will be no roof over his head and that of his children. Already there is a hot blown air work at committee level on this issue. And I think all we need just is to refer to whatever this motion to the housing committee so that the technical committee will be able to subsume some of the discussion here and uh, bring out a very better result. Thank you, Mr. The House therefore called on the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing to put in place appropriate mechanism to ensure the registration and proper regulation of the activities of all estate developers to be used for the PPPA scheme. The motion was adopted unanimously by the House with the Committee on Housing mandated to conduct an investigative hearing on the fraudulent practices in the sector which have over the years ampered housing development policy in the country and report back in eight weeks for further legislative action. In a related development, the House has passed for second reading the bill for an act to provide imprisonment, registration and monitoring of persons who have been convicted of a sexual offenses against children under 18 years. The bill was sponsored by Honorable Ochilogo Idagbo from Cross River State as a call for monitoring of the activities of convicts of these offenses. Mr. Speaker, we know that minors most times when they are being abused in manners like this do not speak out, are not courageous enough to say this is what is happening, you know, and most times they live with this assault and it, it, it affects their future. They are not able to fulfill their destiny. There are some cases where some minors have had to commit suicide because of, of abuses of such nature. Other lawmakers while supporting the motion expressed disgust in the actions of pedophiles and their continuous acceptance by the society. They said these individuals pose great danger to the public. So keeping records of such criminals who will leave the adult female there that are probably free for them to have, that they can walk up to to have and decide to abuse minors, decide to evaluate, some go as far as fathers violating their, their children and uncles, you have an, a, a nephew coming to your home on holidays, you're not careful, your female daughters are abused before he returns back to school, and you say, oh, uh, uh, this person I've just reported to the police, there's no record, on and on and on. Another family takes him in, probably labels you a wicked auntie, another family takes him in, and he goes on to abuse another child. Sexual offenders, particularly those who molest infants, to enable us have records of them, enable public institutions and in fact homes to be conscious of the existence of such dangerous elements in the society. I would say it's very timely. It's in line with international best practices and we should support this kind of bill. This is the size of our package. Join us next week for another interesting episode of the program. I remain your host, Emmanuel Ehijene.
against their name. Their eyes have been prayer too. Uh, the uh, the language of the rules are 